Hi everyone, it's Agatha from Simple Grow and today we are going to do a lovely Mother's Day session. So this session can be done on Mother's Day Sunday, any time around that day or really any time at all because you can just recreate the session and activities. It's just a really nice excuse to put a few nice props together with the theme. Um, especially if you are spending Mother's Day at home, very likely, uh, it's a nice thing to do something together with the whole family and celebrate the mum. Um, and as an add-on, if you do all the activities, there is a very great chance that your daughter is going to sleep afterwards so the mum can put her feet up. So what I recommend doing is following the activities as we have them um, planned in the session. As the session is designed to build up on different skills um, until your baby reaches the point when they need to stop and process all the information and the best way to do it is through sleep. Uh, some babies don't sleep and that's fine, but the majority might have a really good nap afterwards. Uh, with the whole session, I recommend doing it about a couple of times a week. You don't want to overstimulate your baby and you still want to have that element of a surprise. At the same time, if you do a session more than once, your baby might remember some of the activities already. So it's a really nice um, idea to introduce that element of knowing what to expect next with your baby, especially if you decide to do the session um, quite frequently. What I'm going to do, I'm going to cut the video into smaller activities, smaller parts as well, so you can just dip in and out of your favourite ones anytime you want. And as always with the playlist, um, I don't use my personal Spotify for the recording, but I'm going to pop in a little playlist with all the songs that you might want to use around Mother's Day. A few of my favourite Mother Day, Mother's Day songs there as well. And there might be some... Um, Spice Girls, maybe. <laughs> so have a look if you want. It's under Agatha Yang on Spotify if you have it. If not, uh, for the activities, it's a really nice idea to put some calm um, classical music or calm baby music on any streaming device, anything that you use in the background, just really quietly. Um, and it's a quite a nice um, indication of how long the activity lasts for. So with our activities, you would usually have around four or five minutes per activity. Some of them are a little bit shorter, some of them are a little bit longer, but if you do have a little song, little track in the background, it kind of helps to time you to know how long you want to spend on each of them. But now, without further ado, we're going to sing our song, our favorite song, but actually before we do, just to quickly say that all the activities that we do require adult supervision. Uh, you have to keep a close eye on your little one when you do all of them. And we don't want babies to be stuck in front of TV, TV just watching me. You really want your baby to be um, actively playing with everything that we've got for them. Uh, and they want to play with you. So this is your time together, your quality time to make fantastic memories together um, and to really get that sensory stimulation. Lots of language that you're going to use as well to support language vocabulary develop development. So, so now without the further ado, we are going to sing our favorite song. Are you ready? Thank you. 
much for the babies. Done. Now it's time for a little bit of massage for the babies. So what we'll do, we're going to take our baby and today you might have noticed I've got a little assistant. I thought it would be very, very boring if Jen I just had a little baby doll. So I thought that the monkey would be way more interesting for babies to look at as well. So we're going to put our, you're going to put your baby, I'm going to put my monkey on the mat in front of me. And for this activity, you may want to use a little um, spray, a little few drops of rapeseed um, oil, organic oil. I'm not sure if they are very popular in the shops at the moment, but there is a high chance that you may get it. And um, personally, I think it's the best, well, the best thing to use for baby massage, um, as it's just really, really pure and shouldn't cause any irritation on baby's skin or monkey skin. <laughs> but I'm not going to use any with my monkey. But I'm going to show you a few moves to use with your baby and just to help them with a few little problems that babies might have in their baby lives. And so we're going to start with what's called in reflexology a spinal reflex. So what we do, we're going to massage from the big toe towards the heel. As you can see, it's the inside of the foot, not those little monkey feet. So from the big toe towards the heel, on the inside of the foot, one direction motion, a lovely way to start your massage at home. And it's a fantastic bonding activity for you and the baby. Whenever you do baby massage, or any kind of moves around baby's um, feet or um, their body with massage. Um, always talk to your baby as well. To associate your voice with a gentle, nurturing touch. It's going to make them feel lovely and safe. Um, and don't put a lot of pressure. With our baby massage, it's just really gentle strokes. That's what you want. And it's a really nice move, that spinal reflex, to start your massage with. It's a nice activity to incorporate in your daily routine, to do it after bath time, before bedtime, as the babies um, are going to know that, okay, this is where we're going to calm down and get ready to go to sleep, <laughs> in theory. So try to do one foot and then the other foot. Try to avoid doing two feet at the same time. When you do them separately, you increase body awareness with your baby. So when they can feel separate feet being touched, they know they are there. After spinal reflex, we're going to move on to what's called bowel sweep. So we are going to swipe just over the heel. Okay, so this is my little monkey foot. So just above the heel in a one direction motion again, from inside out, a little semicircle just above the heel. The reason why it's called bowel sweep is because it's supposed to help with any kind of tummy troubles. So if there is trapped wind, if you didn't have a poo for a couple of days, any kind of trouble on bowel, bowel area, this is going to help or support whatever else you do with your baby. Um, but we quite often have sound effects with this um, move during the sessions and some of the mums really swear by it. So when they tried everything else and, and there was no poo or clearly there was some kind of um, unrest around their bowel area, try that and it, it, you know, it's never um, it's not going to hurt anyone if you try, <laughs> it might help. <laughs> so we're going to do the bowel sweep next. And after the bowel sweep, we're going to find that magic button on baby's um, feet. And I just realized um, that if someone walks into the room now, they're going to see me with the monkey thinking what on earth um, is she doing. But anyway, moving on. So we're going to find the magic button on baby's feet. Regular to simply sensory, might know it already. So what we do, we're going to curl baby's toes a little bit. Don't force it, just curl them a tiny bit. And underneath, you're going to see a little indentation, a little dimple, kind of skin gathers in one spot. You can find it on your feet as well, on your partner's feet. Don't try to find it on, your, on any stranger's feet. So we're going to um, find that little spot on your baby's foot and we're going to press it very, very gently with your finger or your thumb, whatever's more comfortable, and make little circles. And I'm not going to tell you to do it um, clockwise or anti clockwise. What I want you to do, I want you to touch the little point and observe your baby, see how they react. Okay, so this move is supposed to calm your baby almost instantly. It's a really nice, um, calm move. So, whenever baby is a little bit unsettled, you may find that this is a really nice go to move for you and your baby. Okay, so do one foot and then the other one. And if your baby is not feeling it right now, 
or they're mobile and they don't feel like laying down on the mat with you, you can sit them up and do those moves. Or you can just let them go and remember them for whenever it's time to get ready for bed and you want nice and calm. Okay, and now we are going to give our babies and my monkey a really big clap because they did so well. Yay! <laughs> So now it's time for our first activity. And for the first activity, we are going to do some cheering for moms. We are going to use cheerleading pom-poms to cheer for our moms. So if you don't have cheerleading pom-poms like that, you can improvise and make your own. If you get a few long socks and tie them with a um, hairband or hair bubble in the middle, you can make your pom-poms. You can use ties that are normally worn on um, the neck and make pom-poms out of these. If you Google it, I'm sure there are lots and lots of creative people online who will tell you how to make your own homemade pom-poms. Just whatever you make them from, uh, if um, you're trying to make them out of paper, be aware to really watch your baby. As with all the activities, you need to supervise them to avoid any kind of hazard. If you do happen to order any of these, just be careful because if you tip them upside down, there's a little plastic uh, thing coming out, poking out. Just be careful whenever you move it over your baby's face. Um, and when these, some of the strands may disattach, just always watch your baby so they don't put anything in their mouth. Okay, and with our pom-poms, we are going to sing a song about pat a cake and um, listen to the instrumental version of it actually. And we're going to move our pom-poms. So the idea is to stimulate baby's eyes as the majority of information we get from the world is through our eyes. So we want nice, healthy eyes for that. And we're going to encourage reach and grasp as well for all the children, which is a fantastic cognitive skill, but also the introduction to fine motor skills for your little one. So we're going to listen to instrumental version of Pat a Cake and move our pom-poms over your baby's heads. Fantastic! Well done, babies! That was great. So now we are going to move on to our music activity where we're going to sing a song. Uh, we had our cake, pat a cake, pat a cake. It's now time for some tea. So we are going to sing a song about a little teapot. So I'm a little teapot short and stout. Here is my handle, here is my spout. When you see, pull me out, tip me over, pour me out. I just messed it up. <laughs> I'm sure you know the song much, much better than I do. What we're going to do, we're going to take our musical instruments <clears throat> and what I would like you to do 
and let you take two instruments, two different things, and let your baby choose which one they want to play with. You may think I'm mad, but regular sewing sessions know that babies are perfectly capable of making choices. Yes, they do. Um, and what we do, even a newborn, if you show them two instruments close enough to their face, so what we want is about 20 centimeters, two inches away, so it's probably that distance. If you show them two um, instruments with quite um, intense primary colors or black and white or really nice clear pattern that they can see, as we know, newborns' um, eyes are not as um, developed as older babies, so their vision is not as clear yet, it's still quite muddy, quite muddy quite um, blurry, so they can't see very far away. But you will notice the moment your child, your baby starts seeing further away, you will see that look on their face, this, you know, this sharpness, absolutely fascinating. But what we want is for babies to see both toys and they will always, always be drawn towards one over the other. I'm not sure about my monkey, but I'm not sure your baby will be able to do that. And then just offer them the toy that they have picked. They can change their mind, but the first choice we're going with. So what we'll do, we're going to give them the choice and that way it's going to be easier for them whenever they are older to be able to make choices. As simple as that. You know how many times you struggle to make simple choices, you know, should I go with this, should I go with that? But actually doing simple activities like that from a very young age is going to make it easier for your baby when they are older. Okay, so we're going to sing a song about the teapot. I'll try not to mess it up. And for babies who find it a little bit tricky and to concentrate for longer, uh, we want to give them the little instrument to keep them with us. Okay, and there will be a little bit of time after the song as well for them to explore the instruments. Ready? Ready, monkey? instruments and now it's time to do some sensory play with babies and I'm going to show you next activity right now. So my monkey looks tired already. I wonder how your babies are doing. For our next activity I'm going to make a little bit of noise but it's only because I want to show you how super simple to prepare next activity the next activity is. So I need a food processor. Yes or blender, anything that is going to whiz um, what we need to whiz quickly enough. So I'm going to put a little bit of baby shampoo. So use whatever you use regularly with your baby. So if it's a um, body baby wash that you always use with them, use that. If it's the same shampoo you always use, use that to make sure that it's safe for the skin. But this one's suitable for newborns. So what you want, you want just a few swirls of the shampoo like this. 
you need a tiny bit of water, the tiniest bit, literally. So we're going to do one and two drops, as little as that. The less water, the less um, mess you're going to have after. So I'm just going to show you, that one's going to be a tiny bit noisy, it might be a bit annoying, you might want to turn it down a bit, not to scare any of the babies. But I just want to show you how quickly the foam rises and how quick, quick it is to prepare. Okay, so are you ready? Ready? So you can whisk for a little bit longer if you want your foam to be thicker, but what you want, you want a little nice shallow container. Um, you can use a bowl, you can use a Tupperware container, um, baking tray, whatever um, is the best and most accessible at this minute. So we are going to tip everything out and put it in our tray. We honestly don't need a lot of foam. Um, mine is quite thick, I didn't add a lot of water, but I didn't want to add a lot of water not to have the mess to clean if I had a baby here, more toddler or a preschooler. It's really suitable for older children as well, 100%. Put that away. So now what we're going to do next, we are going to pop a few things inside. What we use in the session are the bowls. So with the bowls, uh, we pick a few um, pink bowls and then one blue, so there's like an odd one out, little introduction to odd one out activities, if you can see it. Um, so with the foam, the balls are going to behave differently to what they usually do. And in the previous session that um, I put up on YouTube, we're using balls in the baking tray. And this is going to make the balls really slippy. So babies will have to adapt their hands differently. So brain will have to process that in a different way, um, but still fantastic and your babies are going to have tons and tons of fun. You can let them explore it with their feet. You can let, it explore, let them explore it with their hands, not with their mouth. Even though sometimes in the bath it happens that a little bit of foam gets in their mouth, but we don't want babies to eat the foam. Okay, so as you can see, um, that is going to move around. Balls are slippy. A fantastic um, way to learn about the properties of objects to practice fine motor skills, scientific discovery. It's also a really nice calm activity. So if you're looking for something to do in the second half of the day, um, that's going to make babies tired, but not overtired, it's a really nice calm thing, especially if you use one of those lovely smelling baby products that are going to make your babies feel calm, maybe make them think about the bath and bedtime. So definitely worth trying. So what you want to do, you want to put a splash mat on the floor. And um, if you don't have a fancy splash mat, use shower curtain. You can just buy basic shower curtain in any supermarket, any pound shop. If you just want to do it now, you can just take your shower curtain from your bathroom and put it on the floor. Uh, and it's one of those activities that's going to leave your floor nice and clean. <laughs> Unlike of the, most of the activities that we do with the babies. You can use the cushion to put your baby on their tummy. Nice 45 degrees, especially for the babies that um, don't like tummy time, you want the arm excuse me, on their arms over um, so the babies can reach it nice and it's comfortable for them. Um, and as I, as I said, you can also explore it with their hands, with their feet, and we are going to spend about five minutes with this activity. So you can pause the recording now and just play a little calm um, music in the background or just keep an eye on the time because we do want about four or five minutes with the balls. Okay, and now after the balls, we are going to move on to uh, another fantastic fine motor skills um, activity. So we, this was a nice relaxing part for mom, just like a little spa um, um, reference there with the foam, okay? <laughs> um, work with me here. The next one is we're going to give our mums a present, okay? So um, in our sessions, 
we had few sizes of the boxes that we used so small boxes for small babies and as they were um, older we were using bigger boxes so for babies closer to the uh, top age for our sessions we were using bigger boxes and the whole activity really is to try and pull on the ribbons that are put through little holes in our boxes and encourage um, problem solving, dexterity, hand-eye coordination, fine motor skills, language development as well, because you're going to talk to your baby about that. Lots of different skills being practiced here. It's super fun. It really makes babies think, so lots of activity in the brain. So the idea is to pull the ribbon to take it out of the box. What you can use for that, you can use a cereal box, you can use any cardboard box. Cardboard is going to be easier because you will be able to make the holes easier and you can just uh, pinch them with a nail, with a knife, whatever you've got, just be careful. And then through that, you're going to put little ribbons or uh, pipe cleaners, but just be careful with the metal bits and pipe cleaners or anything that can go through it really and you've got available at home. So even if you adapt this activity and if you've got little scarves, done scarves, even your own scarves, and you put them in the box and make the holes much, much bigger, to kind of just put them through so babies can um, they're going to practice exactly the same skills maybe just not as fine as with the ribbon um, but just to start you off to use things that you've got at home so you don't have to spend any money on any of the activities i would do just that and um, for babies who are kind of between a newborn three months um, just over three months stage um, what you want is um, a nice black and white pattern so you can even, uh, if you've got a cardboard box without any patterns, and you can just draw it with a little Sharpie um, painted uh, black and then leave some bits out or make stripes on it. Do something that's going to be really um, quite um, easy for babies to see. And you can just move it over the head. That's all you want really for the baby to engage. And your baby, your newborn, is going to be only engaged and active for short first of time that are not very regular yet that's absolutely fine absolutely normal but you want to engage them with that box for babies who are over three months but don't have that reach and grasp yet you want to show them what you are doing so the mirror neurons in the brains are going to register that so even if they can't do it yet they will be able to the brain register that registers that even if the body is not able to do it yet Okay, so with this activity, again, you want, as your baby um, has done quite a few things already, about three, four minutes. We don't want to overtire the baby here yet. So, uh, well, we don't ever want to overtire the baby, but spend about three, four minutes. And, and again, play a little song, something instrumental, maybe in the background, little baby Einstein um, track in the background, just to know, to give you a little indication of how long and you're doing the activity for, okay? And now for our next activity, we are going to play with some rice. Again, I would recommend getting a little splash mat, even if it's just a shower curtain, because like a rice is really painful if you step on it or if it's under your knee, <laughs> you try to test it. Amy loves playing with rice but whatever she finishes, I just make sure I swipe everything. Um, it is a lovely activity. Even if you have to do a tiny bit of tidying up, the number of benefits is just endless. And I'm going to quickly tell you how I made this rice. I'm going to probably put a little video tutorial. I've tried to do it a few times, but then always something happened that I didn't actually make it. So for your rice, I know that rice is quite scarce now, but if you do happen to have a bag, please use it ask someone you just literally need two cups three cups of it it's probably two cups in that tray and um, just as long as you can just cover whatever container you use just very shallow layer just to cover the bottom of it um, so what you want you want to put the rice from the bag into your container and then you want a few sprays or a couple of tablespoons of vinegar if you don't have vinegar not a big deal if you don't want to color the rice again the sensation is going to be still um, very beneficial for the baby but if you want to make your colored rice um, as I said two tablespoons or a little bit of a spray of vinegar and then mix it with the glove on your hand and then you want just a drop of gel food coloring 
or regular food color that you can get in the supermarket but just just literally tiny but it's going to really distribute evenly if you wear your uh, plastic glove i know that actually think about it plastic gloves for me are the best because we shouldn't be using them now emergency services need them so you can put a little plastic bag over your hand and mix it that way that's to use the gloves keep them for those who need them and then what i also did over here i added a few drops of um lavender essential oil in a little spray bottle and diluted it with water and sprayed my rice with that lavender mixture so this is a lovely activity to do at the end of the session as the lavender is going to promote an even better healthy sleep for your baby after the class so what you want to do we don't want babies to eat it the rice hasn't been cooked so babies are going to explore it with their feet absolutely amazing and their hands but if you see that your baby is desperate to eat it put it in a plastic bag so babies can still explore the texture of it and it's going to be added element of um, the kind of cranking noise of the bag you can punch tiny holes small enough um, to keep the rice inside um, but also so that the babies can smell if you have used any essential oils if you don't have food coloring vinegar essential oils just play with rice as it is still fantastic and for our mother's day session <coughs> In our trays, I popped a little heart shaped um, props just to make it a bit nicer. So, with your baby, what you can do, you can put your baby over the tray. The monkey is doing so well, the baby's going to sleep beautifully after that. So, what we're going to do, we're going to just spread for the rice over your baby's feet. It's a fantastic sensation, just so many tiny signals going straight to the brain, laying amazing foundations for future learning. And just so many signals sent that the brain has to process. And um, so we're going to sprinkle that. Baby's also going to register with their eyes, all the rice um, running through your fingers, something they potentially haven't seen before. So it's a new sensation for them, even better. You can also let your baby explore it with their hands. I'm making them hands different though, I just had a monkey here. Um, and you can also explore it on your little one's tummy again. Uh, it might be easier to access a bit more comfortable over the um, pillow, over the cushion, I mean, kind of 45 degrees, arms over um, the cushion so your baby, hey monkey, can um, have fun with that. Always watch your baby, watch for any in the tiniest signs of distress. We don't want babies to be stressing. This is a fun thing for them. Um, it's a fun time, so definitely watch for any signs of baby letting you know that they had enough. And for this activity, again, you want about um, four or five minutes um, because your baby by that time, we have done so much already, they will probably be a, bit, a little bit tired. So um, four or five minutes, again, little calm, very calm, very um, slow track at this stage um, to make sure that the baby's not getting stimulation from the music that you play. Okay, and that's our rest activity. So after the rice activity, it's now time for the lights. Our lights today, it's really is whatever you've got available at home, 100%. If it was in our session, we would use one of these so a light harness with the light source. And this one is fantastic, it's got antibacterial properties as well. Um, I teamed up with the company called Sensory in Play. And if you check the website, I'm going to put that in the notes for um, that recording. If you check the website and you like any of the products, um, you can get 5% off if you use the code Simply Grow. Some of them might be a bit pricey, but with the code, it should bring the price down a little bit. I know that for many of you, this is not the time to be investing in light harnesses, but just in case uh, you think this is the right investment for you, um, especially if you think that your baby needs um, a sensory room, and some babies well um, this is something that is really nice to invest in. and I can recommend this product because I've used it in classes um, it's not an app because it actually doesn't belong to me <laughs> I've got that on loan from the company so um, I have used it just tested it and the light source is fantastic and like everything about it just works after using a few different ones and so you can play with the light but if you don't have you probably don't light harness you can just use a torch 
or any kind of little light prop that you have at home. And what you want to do, you want to let your baby explore it independently if it's safe to do so, or do what we did with the first activity to move it over your baby's head slowly enough for them to be able to follow it with their eyes. But with this activity, what we need is for babies to focus on one thing at the time now. Okay, it's not going to be lots of things happening. We already had that in the session. We want them to focus now. Okay, so we're going to use the light prop for a few minutes. Okay, so it's going to really quickly start our speaker again. So you are playing with your light prop, and I'm just really quickly setting things up here. Fantastic, and with the lights. Babies who come to our classes know that with the lights there are bubbles. So let's have some bubbles. If you do have a bubble machine, it's now time to take it out. If you don't, you can make your own mixture. There are lots of recipes online how to make your own bubble mixture. Um, I'm pretty sure they just use washing up liquid. Um, and you can use a straw to blow your bubbles over your baby's head. Okay, so you can blow your bubbles for a couple of minutes. We don't want four or five minutes, we just want a couple of minutes with the bubbles. And, and after we have blown our bubbles, it's now time to sing our goodbye song. So I hope you're ready. doing the session on Mother's Day. If not, hope you enjoy it because there is a really nice treat to do with your baby, especially if they're going to have a nap afterwards. Um, these sessions, we are recording them because it is a tricky time now when you might be stuck at home with your baby away from your routine. Um, so it is a little um, lifeline um, thrown your way. So you've got a little bit of routine, a little bit of normality. So if you decide to do that session, it's good to keep that on the same time of the day and helps you as well because you kind of know that you've got the filler for your day so you don't have to worry about inventing different games and um, different play ideas for you and your baby. But please always supervise your little one. Uh, please uh, let me know if you have enjoyed the session and even more importantly, if you think that there's something we could be doing better or something else that you would like me to um, prepare content-wise and put on social and, and just let me know because I really want to support you as much as I can. But I really hope you enjoyed the class. 
please take care please don't let them get to you too much i know it's hard but um, if you need to go out for a walk go out for a walk do whatever it takes but just keep yourself saying happy mama happy baby <laughs> okay and thank you so much for tuning in today thank you monkey for your fantastic help and i hope to see you soon thank you bye